Born Prince Henry Charles Albert David on September 15, 1984, at St. Mary's Hospital in West London. He soon came to be known as Harry, and was later dubbed the Happy Prince. As a flame-haired toddler he attended Mrs. Jane Minor's nursery school as had his elder brother Prince William. And by the time he arrived at Ludgrove School in 1992, the cheeky little boy had already built up a reputation as an athlete and writer. In October 1997 he accompanied his father on an eight-day tour of South Africa, however, where father and son attended a charity concert given by the Spice Girls after which Harry met Nelson Mandela, then President of South Africa. In September 1998, a year after their mother's death, the Prince jointly issued a statement asking the press and the public to let Diana rest in peace and to allow them to carry on with their lives away from the glare of public scrutiny. Harry, although not seen as academically gifted as his brother William, earned a place at Eton in 1998 and became instantly popular with his fellow students. Having graduated from Eton he embarked upon a gap year, some of which was spent as a ranch hand on an Australian cattle station. The break was then extended for a further 12 months. During this time he also visited Argentina and Africa, where he made a documentary about the plight of orphans in Lesotho. He came in for heavy criticism in early 2005 when he attended a fancy dress party wearing a Nazi uniform a few days before Holocaust Memorial Day. In May 2005 Harry began a new phase in his life, joining the prestigious Military Academy Sandhurst as an officer cadet. Known as Cadet Officer Wales he successfully completed the often grueling 44-week training course and was commissioned as an army officer in April 2006 in front of the Queen. Harry encountered love early on, with pretty blonde South African Chelsea Davy. The pair, who seemed to share a fun-loving spirit, began dating in 2004 and enjoyed several happy years together. Early in 2009, though, the couple called time on their relationship, with friends saying Harry had become increasingly focused on his dream of becoming a helicopter pilot. In February 2007 it was announced that Harry's Army Regiment would be deployed to Iraq. But, on advice from the armed services, it was decided that neither Harry nor William would serve with Britain's forces in Iraq. However, in December 2007 Harry began serving a tour of duty in Afghanistan after the British media agreed to not publicize details of his service. His tour ended in February 2008 after foreign news outlets reported his deployment. In 2012-2013 he again was stationed in Afghanistan, where he served as a helicopter pilot. Harry, who attained the rank of captain, left active service in 2015. Harry was active in various causes, including wildlife conservation in Africa. In 2006 he helped found a charity for children in Lesotho, it was dedicated to his mother, who had died in 1997. In 2007 Harry and William held a memorial service to mark the 10th anniversary of Diana's death. In May 2018 Harry married Meghan Markle, a divorced American actress, daughter of an African-American mother and a white father, whose informal approachability and irrepressible personal warmth were reminiscent of the much-beloved Diana. Remembered as the People's Princess, the ceremony was held in the medieval St. George's Chapel at Windsor Castle. On May 6, 2019, Harry and Meghan had their first child, 
a boy named Archie Harrison Mountbatten Windsor. In January 2020 Harry and Meghan announced that they would step back from their royal duties and become financially independent. In addition, the changes took effect on March 31, 2020. The following year the couple confirmed that they would not return as working members of the royal family. Which meant that Harry gave up his honorary military appointments as well as royal patronages. On June 4, 2021, Harry and Meghan had a daughter, Lilibet, Lily, Diana Mountbatten Windsor. The name honored both Harry's mother and his grandmother, Elizabeth II, whose nickname was Lilibet. In September 2022 Queen Elizabeth died, and Harry and his wife were present at various memorial services, including the funeral. Once you're in the military, she means a lot more to you than just a grandmother. She is the queen. And then you suddenly, it's like start realizing, you know, wow, this is quite a big deal. And then you get goosebumps and then the rest of it. There are a lot of times that both myself and my brother wish, obviously, that we were just completely normal. Everyone has a different opinion. Every country has a different way of doing things, but I do believe that we need a regulatory body so that everyone who owns or manages wildlife is subject to inspection and rated on how well they look after the animals and how the communities benefit. People would be amazed by the ordinary life William and I live. I do my own shopping. Sometimes, when I come away from the meat counter in my local supermarket, I worry someone will snap me with their phone. But I am determined to have a relatively normal life, and if I am lucky enough to have children, they can have one, two. It's a mix between the Truman Show and being in a zoo, I think the biggest issue for me was that being born into it, you inherit the risk that comes with it, without choice. I am very sorry if I have caused any offense. It was a poor choice of costume. You've got to have fun in life. Otherwise, wow, imagine life without fun. Conversations with my mother, father, my grandparents as I've grown up have obviously driven me towards wanting to try and make a difference as much as possible. I hope that a lot of my mother's talents are shown in a lot of the work that I do. My mother died when I was very young. I didn't want to be in the position I was in, but I eventually pulled my head out of the sand, started listening to people, and decided to use my role for good. I am now fired up and energized and love charity stuff, meeting people, and making them laugh. All I want to do is make my mother incredibly proud. That's all I've ever wanted to do. I think losing your mother at such a young age does end up shaping your life massively. Of course, it does, and now I find myself trying to be there and give advice to other people who are in similar positions. It's something my mother believed in, if you are in a position of privilege, if you can put your name to something that you genuinely believe in, you can smash any stigma you want, and you can encourage anybody to do anything. I can safely say that losing my mum at the age of 12 and therefore shutting down all of my emotions for the last 20 years has had a quite serious effect on not only my personal life but also my work as well. There's not a day that William and I don't wish that she was. We don't wish that she was still around, and we wonder what kind of a mother she would be now and what kind of a public role she would have, and what a difference she would be making. My mother was chased to her death while she was in a relationship with someone who wasn't white, and now look what's happened. I have probably been very close to a complete breakdown on numerous occasions. It's okay to have depression, it's okay to have anxiety, it's okay to have adjustment disorder. It was never walking away. 
It was stepping back rather than stepping down. We all know what the British press can be like. It was destroying my mental health. I was like, this is toxic. Before I even left the house, I was pouring with sweat. I was in fight or flight mode. I really regret not talking about it. It is okay to suffer, but as long as you talk about it. It is not a weakness. Weakness is having a problem and not recognizing it and not solving that problem. To be honest, dinner conversations were the worst bit about being a child and listening to the boring people around me. You can imagine the kind of dinner parties I had to go to at a young age. Pretty dull. I do enjoy running down a ditch full of mud, firing bullets. It's the way I am. I love it. Anyone who says they don't enjoy the army is mad, you can spend a week hating it, and the next week it could be the best thing in the world and the best job you could ever, ever wish for. It has got so much to offer. I sometimes still feel I am living in a goldfish bowl, but I now manage it better. I still have a naughty streak, too, which I enjoy and is how I relate to those individuals who have got themselves into trouble. 